off the Pirates. Well, I think uh, fans have a, a way of of uh, kind of overdoing it. You know, when a, a ball club has won the pennant three or four times and, and they played fairly good ball, even though they're, they're 13 games behind Philadelphia, they, they fail to give Philadelphia the credit for having a great season, and they have a tendency to kind of down the ball club, who all has been playing pretty good baseball. Well, I think the Dodger fans' feelings would have to parallel those of the Pirate fans right now, because the Dodgers coming off that four-game sweep, losing to the Reds, trailing by 13. Well, I think the problem there is, is pretty much the same as Pittsburgh. I think the, the big problem is that they've lost four games in a row out in Los Angeles, and the fans have a, a tendency to kind of get down on them for that. Tonight, we've got two left-handers, John Candelaria on the mound for the Pirates, Doug Rao for the Dodgers. Two left-handers with pretty contrasting styles. Right. Uh, Candelaria is what you would consider a sidewinder. He comes from Port Arthur. He, he has a good curveball and a real good fastball. Now, you talk about Rao. He, uh, he's a control pitcher. He comes over the top, and he has basically a breaking ball pitcher. One thing Candelaria might have to worry about tonight, Davey Lopes, always a threat to steal. On the other side of the coin, Doug Rao will have to think a bit about Frank Tavares, who's tied with Joe Morgan for the league lead in steals. Right. I think when a pitcher starts worrying about the guy on first base stealing second, he's in trouble. His primary concern should be the guy at the plate. All right. Also working with us tonight on the telecast is Norm Cash, the former Tiger first baseman, who won a batting championship in 1961. The Pirates have a man who was leading the league for quite some time, but has now dropped a third behind Pete Rose and Ken Griffey, center fielder Al Oliver. Well, he, he was hitting 360. And now he's hitting 328, which is still pretty good. But he told me before the game that he hasn't had. One key. The Pittsburgh success is the man who hits behind Oliver, first baseman Wilbur Stargell. Well, Big Willie, he's uh, he's having a pretty good year for most players. He's got 15 home runs and 50 RBI, and I know a lot of guys that would take that for the whole year, but it's it's tough par for Willie. And for the Pirates to do any good, Willie's got to hit a lot of home runs and drive in a lot of runs, and so uh, he, he'll come back and, and have a, a last two good months. The Dodgers have a man who may not win a batting championship, but has certainly developed into one of the most consistent hitters in the National League. Steve Garvey up there in the top ten again today. Well, I, I just call him smooth swinging Steve, and uh, he's got that good swing, you know, over swing, hits the ball where it's pitched, and uh, he's just a real nice guy, and he would really could care less what the rest of his players on his team think today. <laughs> We've got the Dodgers and the Pittsburgh Pirates coming up from Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. John Candelaria to take on Doug Grau, and we'll be back with the start of tonight's game right after this message. Fires. Nick Colosi will work the plate. Eddie Montague at first. Lee Wire at second. Paul Rungi at third. Dodgers Pirates. And here's tonight's Los Angeles Dodger lineup. Paul Lawson, manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers, Bartown, Ohio. Dave Lowe, second base, South Province, Rhode Island. Ted Sizemore, Los Angeles Dodgers, second baseman, Brea, California. Bill Russell, shortstop, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Steve Garvey, first base, Tampa, Florida. Ron Say, third baseman, Tacoma, Washington. Hi, I'm Dusty Baker, Los Angeles Dodgers, and I'll be playing right field tonight, and my home is Los Angeles, California. Bill Buckner, left field, Vallejo, California. Steve Yeager, catcher, Dayton, Ohio. Hi, my name is Doug Rowell. I pitch for the Los Angeles Dodgers. My hometown is Columbus, Texas. And the Pirates defensively, the outfield of Zisk, Oliver, and Parker. In the infield, Bill Robinson having a great year at third. Frank Tavares, that short, he's had a knee problem and missed several games last week. Lenny Stennett, solid second baseman. Willie Stargell at first. Manny Sanguian has been ill and has missed several games, so Duffy Dyer is again back of the plate. And the Pirate pitcher tonight, big left-hander John Candelaria. Came up last year from Charleston. Candelaria has won 10. He and Jerry Royce are tied for the staff lead in victories. Candelaria 10 and 4 with a 3.24 ERA. I think most fans remember last year, Gibby, the National League playoffs. Candelaria was not the winning pitcher, but he struck out 14 reds in game number three. And on a given night, certainly capable of getting into double figures against the Dodgers. Well, 
this guy is definitely one of the pitchers that you can look for in the future. He has great stuff, and, and normally a left-hander that can throw hard is going to be effective, and certainly he is effective. The Dodgers trying to snap a five-game losing streak will send up Dave Lopes, Ted Sizemore, and Bill Russell. The Dodgers minus Reggie Smith Hurt making a great catch in the Red Series. Released from the hospital, however, and hopefully will rejoin the team in Chicago over the weekend. Lopes takes a strike. Davey hitting 232. He's been bothered by injuries this season. Was on the disabled list at the outset of the year. Two homers, 16 runs batted in. The strike one pitch to Lopes is lined to left center field, and Oliver goes back and makes the catch near the track. So Lopes gets good wood, but Oliver takes care of it, and there's one down. Oliver started his major league career as a first baseman, moved into the outfield. He's been maligned a bit out there, but I think one of the better defensive center fielders in the National League, Bob. I think Al, is a, he can play anywhere you put him. They had him at first base for a while. He was unhappy. He wanted to play center field, but of course they had a couple of guys out there that could play. Uh, they made some trades and got rid of him, and now he's back out where he wanted to be. Ted Sizemore takes inside. Sizemore starting his career as a catcher in the Dodger chain. Came up one rookie of the year as a second baseman, then over to the Cardinals, and now back to L.A. Shallow right field. Parker has a long way to go and gets there. Dave Parker on the run to take care of Sizemore, so Lopes and Sizemore gone in the first. Two down, and it'll bring up Bill Russell. You know, you're talking about Oliver a while ago. He's, in my opinion, he's too good to play first base. You know, they can put anybody over there and let them play first base. But uh, you know, if you got a man that can can run and throw, you know, you use him in the outfield. That's when they put me at first base. You know, that's the only place I could play. Self-effacing <laughs> Norm Cash. <laughs> Russell takes inside ball one. Bill having his best year. He's hitting an even 300, five homers, 47 RBIs. Fouls it back. Russell hitting in the three spot. Last year, most of the time, he had eight. This year, he has been everywhere but fourth. Two down, bases empty. No score in the first inning at Pittsburgh. Hit down to Tavares. And Candelaria has a one, two, three inning. So the Dodgers got in order after a half inning. Dodgers nothing, and the Pirates coming up. The Dodgers went out in order in the top of the first inning. Doug Rao will work for the Dodgers, and here's the Pittsburgh Pirate lineup that he'll be facing tonight. Hi, I'm Denny Merck, all the managers of the Pittsburgh Pirates. My hometown is Chester, Pennsylvania. I'm Frank Tavares, shortstop. I'm from La Chimata in Dominican Republic. I'm Randy Stennett, second baseman of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Panama Canal Zone. I'm Al Oliver, center fielder for the Pittsburgh Pirates. I'm originally from Portsmouth, Ohio. I'm Willie Stodgill of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and I play first base. I'm from Oakland, California. I'm Richie Zisk of the Pittsburgh Pirates. I play left field, and my hometown is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Dave Parker, right field, home, Cincinnati, Ohio. Bill Robinson, my hometown is Elizabeth, Pennsylvania. I'll be playing at third base. Buffy Dyer, catcher, Pittsburgh Pirates, hometown, Phoenix, Arizona. John Candelaria, pitcher. Brooklyn, New York. Dodgers going out one, two, three in the top of the inning, and up come the Pirates to face Doug Rao, Tavares, Stennett, and Oliver. Tavares missing four or five games with a bad knee, but back in the lineup yesterday against the Mets. Frank hitting 252 with 17 runs batted in, tied with Joe Morgan for the league lead in steals with 37. Takes a strike. You know, that's something that's unusual in itself. There's a guy hitting 250, and he's leading the league in uh, stolen bases. I've got to tell you one thing, and he steals every time he gets on. Morgan and Tavares have 37. Sedano has 36. Davey Lopes of the Dodgers, despite all of the injuries, 35. Looped into right field for a base hit. Tavares aboard, leading off with a single to right, and it will bring up Ronnie Stennett. Well, you got to figure he's going to be going almost any time. I, I, 
I would doubt that uh, they would have any kind of a field sign for him. He just got to be going when he gets a jump. Dodgers on the field, the outfield of Buckner, Lopes, and Baker. Say at third, Russell at short, Sizemore at second, and Garvey at first. Jaeger with a bad knee catching, and Doug Rao on the mound. Rennie Stennett's been hot over the past month. He's at 333. Takes outside. One and oh. Garvey holding Tavares aboard at first. Frank with 37 steals. He's been caught only four times. Breaking ball hit foul outside third. One and one. Tavares earlier in the season had a string of 27 steals in a row. No score, bottom of the first inning. Doug Rao working for the Dodgers. Rao is 10 and 8, his ERA 2.96. Doug has completed six of his 22 starts. My old friend Ed Herman had just come over to the Houston Astros was one that cut off his 28th try. Hit to right, Baker. Easy play for Dusty and there's one down. Herman may have saved Davy Lopes' mark. Lopes last year had a record of 38 in a row. One down, Tavares at first, held on by Garvey, and up comes Al Oliver. Oliver hitting 328. Having problems since the All-Star break. Pete Rose now leading the league in hitting. Rose is seeking his fourth batting title. And Ken Griffey of the Reds is second. On and oh. The Reds have five in the top ten. The Pirates have two. Oliver and Robinson and the Dodgers have one. Garvey, who's tenth. They've got him picked off. Garvey chasing him towards second and flips to Russell, who makes the tag. So Tavares gets caught leaning the other way. And it goes in the books as a caught stealing as they get Tavares going in a second. Now, Frank's been bothered with a knee injury and may have re-injured it here as Garvey runs him down toward Russell. So Tavares comes limping off. Thrown out 1-3-6 with two down now. The 1-0 pitch coming up to Al Oliver. Two and oh the count. Round missing inside. Well, I'm still going to pick this guy to win the batting title. I oh. picked him a couple months ago, and I just think that when he gets hot, he is one of the best streak hitters going. Ball four. So Oliver is on. Pete Rose is probably watching in Cincinnati tonight. We're on in Cincinnati. The Reds have an off day, so I'm going to send Pete your home address. <laughs> well, Pete, Pete's a good friend of mine, and he's won it before. And I don't want to see Oliver win it this year. And that's one reason right there that Al is not hitting too good. He hasn't been taking any walks. If you start mixing in a few more walks like that, and then, you know, he won't go from there 0 for 4 and 0 for 5. Rose used to be a good friend of yours. <laughs> Stargell takes a strike, 0-1. You know, I'll tell you one thing that, that may be uh, the determining factor where the Oliver is going to hit 3, uh, 40 or 50, and that's this guy hitting right now. Popped up. Ted Sizemore waiting for it. And down go the Bucks in the first. No runs, one hit, and a man left on at the end of one. Dodgers nothing, Pirates nothing. Second inning in Pittsburgh, Dodgers nothing, Pirates nothing. This is the first game in a three-game series. Had to be a long trip for the Dodgers last night. They've got their own plane, which helps out, but when you lose four in a row to the Reds, 13 back, I guess it seems like you're going to Siberia to fly cross-country. You know, it's tough even uh, if you won three out of four and you lose that last game and you got to make a, a road trip. Uh, it's tough on you. Steve Garvey to lead off in the second inning. And Candelaria starts him with a fastball up high, ball one. Candelaria, 6'7", 215 pounder. John, 22 years old. Great basketball player in high school in New York. One and one. Oh, this guy up there at the plate right now, Garvey, is he's smooth. He's got a nice, easy stroke. He don't overswing. 
He knows what he's doing. Hit the short. Tavares backhands and gets him. Nice play by Frank. So Tavares, despite getting picked off and limping off, staying in. One down, and Ron Say the batter. Say has hit a home run in each of his last three games. Ron hitting 287, 17 home runs, 56 runs batted in. Say's career high, 25 homers, so he'd have a shot at that. Curve for a strike. Candelaria, we talked about him being a great basketball player in New York. He is second in the all-time rebounding figures in the Catholic leagues of New York. And the man who is first, I think you may have heard of him, used to go by Lou Alcindor. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Mm -hmm. Candelaria keeping some fast company. Say checking his swing. And the count one and two. You know, this guy's small. I wonder where he gets all his power. He's, he's not about 5'10", is he, Bob? Right, but he's, uh, he weighs about 200 pounds. You know, and you pack uh, 200 pounds into a 5'10 frame, usually a pretty strong guy. He's got those little short arms, too. You know, a little compact swing. Candelaria's one, two pitch to say. Inside. Interesting, the contrast. The pirate power men are guys you wouldn't want to run into in back alleys. Parker and Stargell, the Dodger power men, are medium-sized people. Say and Garvey. Yeah, the pirate power men look like they played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> Come up. Bring it to the count. I think uh, uh, the scouting system has a lot to do with the, the type of player, and the Dodgers are always stressed speed, defense, and that's pretty much the type of ball player that they go out and look for. Grounded foul, Tommy Lasorda handling it outside the coaching box at third. Probably had a few words of wisdom to throw in there. A few hundred words of wisdom. And I'm not sure that all of it is wisdom. <laughs> still talking, look at him. Yeah. Still, he, for, he forgot we didn't put a mic on him tonight. He's still, <laughs> still jabbering away. Good man. He said I'll holler loud enough you can hear me anyway. Two to say is called strike three. Fastball at the knees and down he goes. Candelaria has shut down the first five. That's his first strikeout. Say is gone. Take a look at the last pitch again from center field. Yes, sir. That ball is down and in, and normally you don't want to throw a guy down and in, but you catch him by surprise every once in a while. He knew it was a strike. Snuck that little sidearm in there, too, which you ordinarily don't do. Dusty Baker at the plate. Baker hitting 247, fouls it back. On one. Baker came over in a trade with the Braves. Dodgers thought that Baker would hit around 300 with maybe 20 homers. So Dusty way off. One and one. Interestingly enough, Baker in his first at bat as a Dodger hit a home run opening day against John Montefusco in San Francisco then didn't homer again until July. Two and one the count. That's not what you call one of your basically good starts for a home run. Mm. You know, the problem here is staying up for 162 ball games, getting keyed up all the time. Baker pops it up, right side. Rennie Stennett ready to handle it. And the Dodgers are gone in order. The candle area has set down six in a row. And at the end of an inning and a half, Dodgers nothing, Pirates nothing. No score. Bottom of the second inning. As we look into the Pirate dugout, Richie Zisk emerging to lead off in the bottom of the second inning. Then Dave Parker and Bill Robinson. Nicolosi played umpire tonight. Eddie Montague, 27 years old, rookie umpire. But I'll tell you, he really got into one with Dave Bristol in Atlanta the other night. Montague at first, Lee Wires, tallest umpire in the league, 6'6", six, six, at second. And Paul Runge, who tells me he's the handsomest umpire in the league, working at third. <laughs> they, they all, Bruce they all think, told me that also. They all think they're pretty, I'll tell you. <laughs> 
and never make a mistake. Now, nah, I'm going to say, they might not think they're pretty, but they all think they're right. <laughs> Gibson's buddies. <laughs> well, I, you got to give them credit. It's, it's a tough job. He's got to call 150, 60 pitches down there, and ain't nobody alive going to miss a few of them. You know what's tougher? Having to throw 150, 60 pitches. <laughs> Second inning, Kansas City out in front of New York. Battle of the divisional leaders in the American League Royals. Three Yankees, nothing in the second. One and one, the count on Zisk. Doug Rao, 27-year-old Texan. Rao last year, 15 and nine. Breaking ball, missing ball two. You know, back to that Kansas City, uh, New York game there, the Yankees are starting to melt a little bit. That's, they want if they lose this game, they might only have about an eight-game lead. They still might have a race. Good off-speed pitch, Rob turning it over and just got in front. The count two and two. Doug Rao came up in late '72. Strike three, low and in, and Richie Zest. The first out in the second inning. Rao gets his first strikeout, and it brings up Dave Parker. I guarantee he had something on that one besides two fingers. He threw that ball hard. Yeah, if you notice how how these guys are, are pitching, these big, strong guys on Pittsburgh ball, but they like to get their arms out and hit that ball away from them. They're trying to keep it in tight. Trying to jam them. Hits it off the hands down to Sizemore. Over to Garvey in time. And it's two away. Well, that Parker can really travel. You know, he made a routine out then close where you run. He's best. Would have made a good tight end. I believe as big as he is, he could have made a, anything. He could have he played in where he wanted to. <laughs> He's big enough, he'd tell you where he wanted to play. <laughs> Bill Robinson, up and down career. But getting a chance now to play at least semi-regularly and hitting 316 takes a strike. Robinson, eighth in the league in hitting. They've had him at the in the outfield, at first base, and now over third. Oh, and to the count. Picture of uh, right now, he's he's very uh, confident in himself. You know, for many years he was around the leagues and he just didn't have the confidence. But I talked to him today and he's he's just a different person. Strike two pitch is way outside. One and two, two down, Duffy Dyer waiting on deck. We're in the bottom of the second inning at Pittsburgh, no score. Out straight back. Richie Hebner having an off year, so he's being platooned. They've had Tommy Helms at third base from time to time. But Robinson in there now against left-handers. I might say uh, he's, he's very effective against left-handers. You might say he eats them alive. Two and two the count. Rouse two-two delivery and Robinson strikes out swinging. So Rouse strikes out two in the inning. Pirates are gone in order and we'll go to the third in Pittsburgh with a score Dodgers nothing, Pirates nothing. Saturday, ABC's Wide World of Sports will feature John Neighbor, Shirley Babishoff, and other Olympians participating in the National AAU Swimming Championships live from Philadelphia. The Firecracker 400 stock car race from Daytona Beach, Florida, and live reports on the progress of the PGA National Golf Championship from Washington, D.C. That's ABC's Wide World of Sports this Saturday at 3.30 Eastern Time over most of these ABC stations. I also want to remind you, next Monday, ABC's Monday Night Baseball begins one hour earlier at 7.30 Eastern Time, 6.30 Central. Consult your local listings for the game in your area next Monday night. Nick Colosi about finished with his house cleaning as we go to the third inning. No score. Bottom of the Dodger runner with Bill Buckner, Steve Yeager, and Doug Rao. Buckner coming back after a year in which he was besieged by injuries, hitting 292. With a left-hander Candelaria going, there's Murtaugh, Danny Murtaugh, the Pirate manager. With a left-hander going, Buckner dropping down into the seventh spot. 
Billy normally hits second, not particularly enamored hitting second in the order. Check swing and he comes around on the count 0-2. Oh well, this guy's got to be tough on left-hand hitters. There's, there's no way. Well, he drops down and, as you mentioned, comes from Port Arthur. What do you mean by Port Arthur? <laughs> coming from down underneath the Texas. Right? That's right. <laughs> Left-handers just don't like it for some reason. I think they're they're complaining about that call there. You know, if the manager complains about a call, he can be kicked out of the ball game. Buckner uh, may have hurt himself on that swing. I'm wondering. But he tried to hold up. He couldn't hold up. He tried to. This guy's sidearm, and if I was up there, I'd, <laughs> I might have pulled a muscle. I guarantee you, I'd already pull one before he can get out of the dugout. You know, we were talking about that be before the ball game, and I just don't understand why left-handed pitching is so effective against left-handers. Uh, they just don't want to hit off of them. They bail out, they fall over, they lay down, they do a bunch of things. I think he's hurt. Yeah, Buckner's going to come out. So Buckner trying to check his swing. He's coming out. Jaeger is playing with a bad knee. Ellie Rodriguez, the Dodgers' other catcher, has a bad hand. That's Lee Lacey who will come up and well, inherit an 0-2 count. He couldn't come up in a better position right now because he's got nothing to lose. The count is two strikes. If he strikes out, blocks to Buckner. You know, Al, this he is gets a... the base hit, it blocks to Lacey, right? This is a difference in uh, the ball games today than they were years ago. Years ago, you weren't smart enough to come out of there when there was something bothering you like that, and you tried to play, you know, and everybody wanted to be a rough, tough guy, and you got an injury, and you just gone out there and play anyway. You end up hurting yourself permanently or at least be out of the lineup for a month or two, and really it wasn't too helpful for anybody. We used to like to say, oh, yeah, we were tougher than those guys, but, you know, maybe we were dumber. <laughs> uh, my old theory was there's not a bone showing. Get out there and play. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, you know, full side muscles, they're tough. Here's the replay on Buckner's check swing. Yep. Now the 0-2 pitch coming up to Lacey is called strike three. So Lacey strikes out. It's a lovely spot to be in, isn't it? 0 and 2, you're sitting on the bench and relaxing and watching the game. Get a bat. Didn't hurt him at all if the strikeout goes to Buckner. If he'd have got a base hit, well, it would have been Lacey's base hit. Steve Yeager, the batter. Yeager hitting 228. Steve with 11 homers and 29 runs batted in. 1 and 0. Rodriguez, we mentioned, with a bad hand. Yeager with the knee hurt it swinging in the game against the Reds over the weekend. One and one. It looked for a while tonight like Sizemore would have to catch for the Dodgers. You know, you mentioned before the game that Sizemore signed as a catcher. Just recently, he did catch a couple of extra innings. Last week against the Astros. Said he looked pretty good. Yeah, I'd like to have seen him. <laughs> Wonder who called the signs for him. Delaria with a 2-1 pitch. Grounded foul. The count on Jaeger is 2-2. Two two. Candelaria has started by setting down the first seven. John with two strikeouts. One out, bases empty in the third inning at Pittsburgh. No score. Ball three. You know, one thing the Dodgers have got to guard against, and being as they're so far out in the race, but they just come off of a four-game loss, and it is tough to get yourself up for this ball game. They got to be flat coming in here. And Jaeger is on. So the Dodgers have their first base runner. Jaeger a one-out third inning walk. And it'll bring up Doug Rao. Well, Buckner having to come out. The Dodgers at least getting some good news. Reggie Smith, it looked like Smith did not join the team until this weekend in Chicago. But we're here now. Reggie will report here tomorrow. Smith made a fabulous catch in Dodger Stadium over the weekend, robbing George Foster of a home run. Rao hits a soft rounder to short. Bennett turning it over, but not in time. They 
get the force on Jaeger at second, and there's two down. So Rao is aboard with two down in the third inning. And Davey have... Lopes coming up. I figure he might have been button in that situation, but maybe he's a better hitter than uh, we think he is. <laughs> Well, Norm, you got out of that one. <laughs> Dave Lopes drove one to the gap in left center, which Oliver caught in the first inning. Dave batting 231. Breaking ball in at his feet. One and other count. Now at first. Doug on a stretch of goes who starts to a playing back of it. And Lopes takes ball two. Two and other count. Doug Rao boarded first. No score in the third inning. Hit down to Tavares and right through it. Rao pulls in the second. Tavares had an easy play. And nonchalant it. Well, according to the papers and everything that's been happening to the Pirates lately, that's exactly what's happened to them all year. They, they've been bobbling ground balls. They've been missing the cutoff man. They've been throwing the wrong base. And they haven't been doing the fundamentals good. And you're not going to win any championships uh, if you don't do the fundamentals. You know, uh, the, the Pirates aren't really noted for their slick defensive play anyway. So it's really not much different than it has been in the, in the past few years. They were never a great defensive ball player. Tavares' 22nd error of the year as Sizemore takes a breaking ball inside ball one. Yeah, back when, you know, when Oliver was hitting home runs, hitting good average, and Starfield hitting 50 home runs. And, and you can you just outpower everybody. Right. Do it the shot. The Pirates have averaged an error a game, 109 errors in 109 games. Two on, two out, no score in the third. At the knees for a strike and the count two and one. At Kansas City, they go to the third inning. Royals still leading the Yankees 3-0. Breaking ball hit foul and the count two and two. Two good ball clubs over. That's Whitey Herzog got Kansas City really going good. Doug Rao aboard at second. And Dave Lopes at first. That's one way to keep Lopes from stealing. <laughs> two down. Two and two the count. what the opposition used to do when I played with a Tiger. They'd walk me intentionally, get to clog up the bases. Yeah. I remember you. You went around with a cane. I could see better than that. 2-2 two -two to Sizemore. Is grounded to Robinson and off his glove. Rowell will stop at third and the bases are loaded. Support is not exactly dazzling in the third inning. Davy Lowe pulling in a second. Sizemore reaching. Robinson gets an error. And so Candelaria is asked to get five outs in the inning. Makes it a little bit tough, you know, when you're out there and you're pitching. Of course, the guys are doing their best, but it makes for a tough ball game. They're loaded for Russell. Bill grounds it out in the first inning. fielded by Tavares over to Senate. So the errors do no damage. In the inning, no runs, no hits. Two errors, three left. End of two and a half, no score. like a baseball player. Dream you're an all-star. Have fun.
fun with baseball. The preceding was a message on behalf of Major League Baseball. In focus come the Chandeliers and the Allegheny Club. Private club back of first base. Pretty good way to watch a ball game, huh? Oh, yeah. Lee Lacey stays in the game. He'll play left field. Buckner coming on. Lacey now in left. Amos Otis homering in the third inning at Kansas City, so the Royals still hitting in the third, leading the Yankees 4-0. Duffy Dyer to lead off, takes a strike. Dyer, Candelaria, and Tavares in the bottom of the third inning, no score. Foul back. Manny Sandian has been under the weather for a few days, so Dyer has been doing the catching. Duffy, another product of Arizona State. I mentioned that one night, and you said, how can I put him up there with Bando and Jackson and Monday, Bob? Yeah, I did say that. <laughs> He's in the lineup. One and two. Well, they got a good baseball program out there in those Arizona schools, I'll tell you. We used to go out there and play them back when I went to old Saul Ross State. They didn't have schools then, did they? Yeah. <laughs> it's all girls school. <laughs> that was a long time ago, Norm. <laughs> Off speed pitch and Dyer strikes out. So Rao has struck out three, and it brings up Candelaria. This game is telecast under television rights granted by Major League Baseball solely for the entertainment of the viewing audience and any publication. Reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the explicit written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as charging admission for its showing, is similarly prohibited. Candelaria takes outside ball one. Candelaria hitting 184. He has nine hits this season. Out. Injury to Buckner on the check swing, his right hip. <laughs> Two and one. Pirates bench. It can be very painful, too, you know, having to pivot those hips in the swing. Two and to the count. Head of the game, Frank Tavares, the leadoff single. There's Buckner as he remains on the Dodger bench. Candelaria fouls it off. On deck, Frank Tavares. Two balls, two strikes on Candelaria. One down, bases empty, bottom of the third inning. No score. to Russell to get him a second. Tavares from the Dominican Republic. Takes a strike, going one. One and one. Dodgers trying to snap a five-game losing streak. Houston Wednesday, and then got swept over the weekend by the Reds. You're not going to beat the Reds, though, when you score nine runs in four games. One and two. I was 
talking to the starter before the game, and he was telling me that they were just one base hit away or just one little mental, mental error away from uh, winning uh, two or three of those ball games over. They just couldn't pull it over. And Rao has five strikeouts. He strikes the side out here in the third. And at the end of three quick endings in Pittsburgh, it's the Dodgers nothing, the Pirates nothing. In Pittsburgh, Al Michaels with Bob Gibson and Norm Cash. No score as we go to the fourth inning. Walter Alston in the Dodger dugout. And Alan Malamud, who is the sports editor of the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, out with a column in this afternoon's editions. Time for Alston to go. Walter, the subject of quite a bit of controversy. I get to L.A. a lot. You listen to the radio talk shows where people call in. One call, get rid of the bum. Next call, no, he's got a lot of experience keeping back and forth. He just sits there, calm, placid. Trying to, trying to win your contract again every year. You know, um, I think uh, the fans give the manager too much credit for winning or losing a ball game. If you have a good ball club, I don't care who you are, you can become a great manager. But by the same token, if the ball club stinks, I don't care what kind of manager it is, he's not going to do a good job. Oh, two pitches inside. And that's not to say the Dodgers stink. They, they're having a pretty good year, but Cincinnati's just kind of run away with things. Theory of relativity. I know a few clubs, if they were that far over 500, they'd be popping champagne. The Cardinals, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Giants, Expos. Fouled away. One and two on Garvey. Garvey, Say and Baker, fourth inning, no score. Say on deck. Foul tip and held by Dyer, strike three. That's Candelaria's third strikeout. So it's been Candelaria and Rao tonight. Candelaria hasn't given up a hit. Rao's given up one single and has struck out five. Say the batter struck out in the second inning. Shall we, uh, shall we start getting excited a little bit here about the no-hitter? I know every time we say something like that, everybody hits the ceiling. Hey, you're talking when they're pitching a no-hitter. Nah, that, that's a myth. That's over and done with. Guys have been talking about it on the air for years. Seems like we have a no-hitter every time we do a game on a Monday. Last week, we had Alexander in New York. Perfect game, two out in the seventh. Garland and Baltimore, two out in the eighth. We'll have one for the years over. On to the count on Shea. Foul back. Only one, one man no hitter pitched in the majors this season. Larry Durker, though Blue Moon Odom and Francisco Barrios combined to walk 11 and pitch a no hitter at Oakland. See, that's what you call smart pitching. Uh -huh. they, they, they walk the guy every time they thought he was going to get a base hit. Pitch around him, huh? <laughs> get the next guy. Say strikes out swinging. So Garvey and Say have both struck out in the fourth inning. Quickly two down. And Dusty Baker. How about Steve Luber, the Twins, the other night? Two out the ninth, lost the no-hitter. Right. Uh, you know, it seems every time uh, somebody makes an error, and it cost the pitcher. Uh, the guys, like I said before, the guys out there playing, you know, as hard as they can. But when you make an error, it seems like it does something to you. Baker takes inside. Thurman Munson is homered for the Yankees in the fourth. The Yankees hitting in the fourth. Kansas City leading 4-1. One and one on Baker. That could be a rerun of the classic in October for the playoffs. Kansas City, New York Yankees. Preview of the playoffs, which will be on ABC. Al Oliver, easy play. Down goes Baker. Candelaria has not given up a hit through four. And at the end of three and a half in Pittsburgh still. The Dodgers nothing, the Pirates nothing. Catch up on some scores here. There's no score in Pittsburgh end of three and a half. Hall of Fame game in Cooperstown today. The Brewers beat the Mets nine to three. They had the induction ceremonies inside because of the rain, but they were able to play. In the fourth, Kansas City leading the Yankees four to one. Texas out in front of Cash's buddy, six to nothing. Third inning, Cleveland leading the White Sox in the sixth. 
And here come the Cardinals. See, they don't miss you, Gibby. <laughs> Second inning, 2-1 St. Louis. Giants and Expos 1-1 in the fifth. Here, Renny Stennett hits one down to Garvey, and Steve will take care of it himself. One down. Stennett retired. Up comes Al Oliver. Walked in the first. Well, you got a lot of a lot of ball players in that first ball hitting, I'll tell you. They're just walking up there and playing at the first good pitch that they see. That's an indication that they're a little bit behind in the race. One out, base is empty. Strike here. Bob will tell you the Pirates annually first ball hitters, most of them bad ball hitters come up swinging. That's why the Pirates is such a difficult ball club to pitch a no-hitter against because they swing at everything and they don't wait till the ball is over to play. Inside, outside, high or low, they might they might hack at it, you know, and and in order to pitch a no-hitter, you just about got to throw the ball four oh, feet away from all right. walk them all. You let me in. Bob Gibson <laughs> picked one no-hitter in his career right here. <laughs> Two and one the count. The same ball club. They were hacking at everything. Uh -huh. Of course, when you pitch something like that, you have to have some tremendous plays behind you, which I, I had good defensive play behind me that year. Corner, an old phrase of yours, they, you pitch a no-hit on the day they wasn't hitting. Yeah, it was easy. <laughs> two and two on Oliver. You always uh, had that truculent countenance out on the mound and an air of arrogance about you and everything. When you were in the ninth inning of your no-hitter, you knew it. Were you nervous? Yeah, I was nervous, you know, and I, I hate to admit it because I'm, I'm supposed to be the guy that was so cool, you know, nothing bothered him, but I was actually shaking. Uh, my pants were shaking in the back of the ninth inning. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver hits one down the line for a base hit. They be up with the ball to hold him for one. Now, that's the kind of thing right there that I talked to him before the game about, you know, that since I'm a former batting champion, you know, you got to get a few little tinkers like that. You know, hit them more than not. And all of a sudden, he'll start hitting the ball hard, and he'll get be back getting that three for four, four for five, and be back up on top of the heap again. Here's Stargell, popped out in the first inning. Willie hitting 252. Checks his swing, one and another count. Al Oliver at first base. One down, fourth inning, no score. Two and the count. Mr. Billy wanted to challenge you to a basketball game before this. Oh, yeah. Every time I see him, he wants to play basketball. He's an old ex-basketball player, and, and I'm an ex-basketball player, so he thinks he wants to get me out there on the field, on the court. Two and one. Classy man. Yes, sir. Wilbur Stigel, 35 years old. I never talked to uh, ball players when I, when I was playing, but this is one guy that I always had time to stop and say something to. Just first class. Chopper hit the size more, makes the tag, gets the double play. Al Oliver tagged out by size more than over to Garvey, and the Bucks are done in the fourth. They get a hit, nobody left on, and at the end of four, complete. Pittsburgh nothing, Los Angeles nothing. Don't let the guy tag you. Of course, if you run out of the baseline, you're out anyway. This weekend, ABC brings you exclusive coverage of the 58th PGA National Golf Championship from the Congressional Country Club in Washington, D.C. Coverage starts Friday night, 11.30 Eastern and Pacific, 10.30 Central, with second-round highlights. Saturday's third-round action, live, 5 o'clock Eastern, and on Sunday, the final round, live at 4 o'clock Eastern time here on ABC. Lee Lacy leading off in the fifth inning. God, that's my game. Now. That's something I know something about. <laughs> you, you might know something about it. What are you true? I'm pretty strong seven handicap. I play pretty good. Two and one. You ever play that course in Washington, Congressional? I never played it. I was never invited to Washington, but I, I played some lovely courses. I played Bel Air in California, and that's one of the best courses in the country. Hit down to Short, and Frank Tavares over to Stargell and Top. You couldn't have played Bel Air. I 
did. You don't wear shoes. <laughs> I wouldn't let you in. <laughs> I play with Lassie. <laughs> no, I played. Eddie Marin is a pro out there. Such a fine gentleman. And I played with Robert Stack one day. Can you imagine that? Untouchable. Yeah, it sounds like he's doing a little name dropping yeah. here. <laughs> Give me an auto keep that company. Yeah, I don't know anybody like that. I can mention a few people I know. Name all your friends. You wouldn't recognize them. <laughs> Name all of my one friend. <laughs> yeah, you've got a lot of sports writer buddies. Oh, yeah, we love each other. <laughs> oh, and one on, Jaeger. One out, bases empty, nothing, nothing in the fifth, and the count on two. You mentioned before you don't, or you didn't when you were playing talk to a lot of visiting players, and that runs counter to the normally uh, accepted mode around the league. Right, my theory was uh, the less I said to the opponent, the, the less comfortable they were around me uh, when I would pitch against them they weren't sure whether I was mad at them whether I liked them whether I didn't like them and I think it was it would be more effective for a pitcher not to talk to the other guys so they'd be unsure of themselves with confidence they'll hit the ball no confidence they won't hit it you must have written the book winning through intimidation well with a nom de plume huh? I tell you uh, a lot of guys do it a lot of different ways and uh, the way I did it was effective for me I can't say that that works for everybody you know you might go out there and yell at somebody and end up getting punched in the eye I don't know <laughs> just didn't happen to me one two to Jaeger hit in the air to right field deep but Parker has some room Fifth inning with Doug Rao coming up. The Candelaria has not given up a hit through four and two thirds. He has walked one. He was in trouble in the third inning. The Pirates made two errors back of him, and that's the inning in which he issued the walk and then had to work out of a bases loaded jam by getting Russell to hit into a force. Doug Rao grounded out his first trip. Oh, that mean breaking ball. Mm. One and one. Kansas City now leading the Yankees six to one in the bottom of the fourth at Kansas City. You know, the, the Dodgers having lost these four games in a row, if they have a guy pitch a no hitter against them today, it's just about to kill them. Just about to destroy the morale. One and two on Rao. Rao gets on. Davey Lopes will be next. Two down. Base is empty. Fifth inning. No score. Two hits in the game. Both by the Pirates. Checked in time. And the count two and two. Oh, he looks wicked out there tonight. Got to be stinking that sidearm curveball breaking away from left handers. Good shot right here. Oh, oh, strike three. Candelaria ends the fifth inning with his fifth strikeout. Rouse says, Give me that ball now. <laughs> Candelaria, a no hitter through five, and the end of four and a half, nothing, nothing. Al Michaels, Norm Cash on the right. Gibson here in the middle. <laughs> he picks a no-hitter in this ballpark. Candelaria's got one tonight. Through five. Looking sharp. Struck out five. I think it's a little early for him to get concerned. Uh, if he goes into the seventh inning and uh, he hasn't given up a hit, hit then, it's time to get a little excited. Right now, it's a little bit early. Doug Rouse got some good stuff tonight, too. Oh, they're, yeah. They're both pitching great. Uh, you know, being a left-handed hitter, I'm glad I'm sitting up here in a booth tonight where that breaking ball is breaking. John Candelaria. Six feet seven. He's not worried about it. He's cool. Nah, so he wants some runs. He wants runs. <laughs> Bottom of the fifth inning. No runs, two hits, two errors for the Pirates. No runs, no hits, no errors for the Dodgers. This leads off by lining one to left, and Lacey has to play it on a bounce. Richie Zisk, a leadoff single here in the fifth inning, so the Pirates have the leadoff man on. And Dave Parker coming up. Parker having 
a good year average-wise, came in tonight hitting 303. What's surprising is a man with his strength has only seven home runs at this point in the year. I think the, the big thing with, with Dave is that he, he doesn't only hit the ball hard when he hits it on the end of the bat, I mean, on the fat part of the bat, but he hits the ball pretty good when it's inside, too. So he gets a lot of hits that aren't necessarily on the, the meat of the bat. And that accounts for his hitting 300 or hitting near 300 every year. Hit sharply to the hole and through. They were playing at the pull, and so Russell was over toward the middle. Well, he did exactly what you said, Bob. That ball hit him right on the hand. Yeah, the book, the book uh, on Parker is to pitch him inside. Of course, he's so big and strong, when you pitch him inside, he still can get a base hit like he just did. Well, he, I looked at his bat before the game. It looked like he used a wagon tongue, too, so no way you're going to break that thing. The Pirates have their first threat. Richie Zisk at second. Dave Parker at first. Nobody out. Bill Robinson, the batter. Fouled away. Robinson struck out in the second inning. in his first jam of the night. The Pirates have had a runner on in only one other inning. In the first, Tavares singled, but was thrown out. Trying to go into second. Got caught leaning the other way. And then Oliver walked with two down. Now they have runners at first and second. Nobody out. It's Stockley Stairs. Down the left field line and into the corner. This will come in the score, and Lacey has trouble with it on the warning track. So Parker will score on a double by Robinson. Uh, Robinson's just having one of those super years, and uh, I always like to see ball players finally, you know, get a lot of confidence in themselves, and, and he has certainly achieved that. Hit that ball like a bullet. There's, just, there's nothing you can do about that. Uh, the third baseman has got to play double play position. You can see he's off of the bag there. He's he's four feet off of that bag. Ball's down the line. Nothing you can do about it. In later innings, that third baseman is going to be playing closer to the bag, and of course he would have caught that ball. And Lacey, who's out of position in left, he's been playing second and center, having trouble with the carom. As Parker crosses the plate with a second run after Zisk, and Bill Robinson is at second, Walter Austin is at the mound, and the Dodger bullpen is in action. Left-hander Stan Wall, right-hander Elias Sosa. Austin on his way back. Pirates lead 2-0 in the fifth inning. How many times Walter's made that trip? I wonder what he says when he goes out there because he's a man of very few words. And uh, it would be interesting to find out what he's talking about when he goes out there. Delia Sosa, the right-hander. Stan Wall, the left-hander in the Dodger bullpen. The batter, Duffy Dyer, takes the ball, one and all. All right, you say Walter is a man of few words. So is Red Sheendees. Your former manager of the Cardinals, what did he say when he went out? How do you feel? <laughs> you know. It's a right field. It'll be an out, but deep enough to advance Robinson. Baker makes the catch, and Robinson moves over to third. Of course, you know, when, uh, when the manager is going to take you out, he doesn't really say very much at all. He comes out, and he asks for the ball. If he comes out, and he asks you how you feel, you think you can get the guy out. You know you got a shot at it. Most of the managers, when they're going to take you out, They'll, they'll have called that guy in the bullpen when they get to the foul line, so you don't have to worry about trying to talk him into leaving you in there, because usually when he leaves you in there, you end up getting knocked all over the place anyway. Sometimes I wonder why, Bob, if they're intent on taking a guy in, why they don't just take a towel and wave it and say, come on in, instead of going out there. <laughs> you know. But not the suicide squeeze. Jaeger makes the catch. It was the safety with Robinson holding it third. So Candelaria tried to get it down to get Robinson in. Jaeger making the catch, and there's two down. You know, Norm, you, you, you asked that question a lot. I don't think why wave out of the dugout. We played a, a series over in Japan after our 1968 World Series, and in Japan, the manager doesn't come out of the dugout. He right. stands there, and he waves you off the field, and he waves the guy from the bullpen in, 
from the uh, from the dugout. I, I don't know why that they wouldn't do it, you know, here. I guess unless they're thinking of showing a pitcher up or something. You know. Tavares takes a strike. Robinson a third, two down. Make it like Boyville, get a long hook maybe. <laughs> <laughs> when you feel something up around your neck, you know yeah. it's time to leave. You're God, pal. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I've seen a few guys you wave at, pal, that had been a dugout before you got through waving it. <laughs> they wanted to get out of there. Oh, and two on Tavares, two down, two nothing Pittsburgh in the fifth inning. Somebody will come up with that this way. No baseball is rapidly changing doing that. Some manager will come up with that one of these days. They've already had radios and hats. That happened a long time ago. I won't now elaborate who it was, but. Fouled away. What do you mean you won't elaborate? I take the fifth. It has happened. I heard. They had radios and hats. Yes. What they do? They put a little transistor in a certain person's ear, and you could talk to him from the dugout and then tell him, you know, what was going on and and say what pitch was thrown. Yeah. Oh, I see. It's the left field. Lacy is there and makes the catch. So in the fifth inning, the Pirates get a couple of runs, three hits, and leave a man. It's 2-0 Pittsburgh at the end of five. Back with more from Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh after this word from our local stations. I always had a feeling this was what Bob Gibson would do when he was finished with baseball. <laughs> I wanted to do that when I was playing, not finished. Are you talking about sweep the field or umpire? A little two <laughs> shot. Check on the cheek. That's what makes the world go round. I think there's a coyote loose up here. On to the sixth inning. Dave Lopes to lead off for Los Angeles. One and go the count. John Candelaria. Has not given up a hit through five. Walked a man, struck out five. Hit down to Tavares. Lopes is gone. One out of the sixth inning. Now it's time to start getting a little excited, Al. Candelaria. Good stuff, good fastball. Good breaking pitch. Gives his breaking pitch over. He's got to make his fastball that much more effective. Sharp tonight. Good control. A hit on most of the hitters. Size Mort takes a breaking ball away. Ball one. This guy, uh, Size Mort, is uh, basically a breaking ball hitter. And by that, I mean he, he hits the breaking ball better than he does the fastball. So I'd be kind of careful with uh, breaking stuff with him. Breaking ball there. Foul away. And the count one and one. Pittsburgh in the sixth inning. And those of you watching the Yankee Royals game, welcome to this one as Ted Sizemore lines out to Frank Tavares. So two down. The story here in Pittsburgh is that John Candelaria has a no-hitter through five and two-thirds. He's been in trouble only once. And not by his own doing. The Pirates made two errors. And Candelaria walked a man in the third inning, but worked out of it. Hit to short. Tavares throwing the first in time to get Russell. And Candelaria with a no-hitter through six. At the end of five and a half in Pittsburgh. The Pirates leading the Dodgers 2-0. Al Michaels with Bob Gibson, Norm Cash in Pittsburgh. The Pirates ahead 2-0. As Doug Rao gets set to go to work in the bottom of the sixth inning, Stennett, Oliver, and Stargell. Pirates getting two in the fifth on singles by Zisk and Parker, and a double by Robinson. Lenny Stennett is 0 for 2, flying to right, grounded to Garvey. hitting 264. Whee! 0 and 1 the count. No, 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 no. Bill Russell. Throw is high and Senator 
with good speed, I think would have beaten it out anyway. So Rennie standing aboard. Al Oliver coming up, and for Oliver, well, there's been some changes since the All-Star game. Think changed a little bit for you? Just to have, I must admit, I think Basie was, was half, and I think uh, I, I ran some tough pitching, and also I, I ran to a lot of Adam balls. I hit the ball exceptionally well uh, since the All-Star break, but for some strange reason, uh, the defensive ball players have been doing an outstanding job. So I think it's a combination of the two, the fact that I had, had a lot of balls at people, and the fact that I have ran to some good pitching. Al Oliver has walked and singled, standing at first base. They gave Russell an error on the play, the Dodgers' first error of the night. The Pirates have hit only two homers against the Dodgers this season. Oliver has one, Robinson the other, both off Rao. One and go the count on Al. He's got a great attitude, this fellow at the plate. Controlled hitter. You know, I really don't care anything about the attitude. He can hit. <laughs> Pop foul. Jaeger giving chase. Won't have room. One. All right, you've said before, Norman, you like Oliver for the batting title. I've got to go with Pete Rose because Pete can smell it now. Bob, who do you think? Well, i got to go with Rose, and, and the reason is, uh, you know, Pete gets 200 hits almost every year, and right now I think he's, I'm not sure, but he's somewhere like 20 hits ahead of uh, Oliver, and, and I think that that's a, a big deficit to make up. Foul back, one and two to count. You guys never do agree with me. <laughs> and I'm right all the time. <laughs> Not true. I've been talking to Dorothy Chad. <laughs> oh. oh. Maybe they'll tie. We all of us be satisfied. <laughs> Standed off to his lead at first. The one-two to Oliver. Popped up. Shallow right center. Dusty Baker after looking at Lope. Davy makes the catch for the out. Lopes playing center, normally a second baseman, but he's played quite a bit of center. Baker, Lee, Baker has been playing a lot of center, and now he's over at right, so a bit of confusion. Yeah, they got their signals crossed up there. You, somebody's got to do the yelling out there. I got it, I got it. Another guy's just got to back off. But a lot of times when you have a, a lot of people here and the noise in the crowd is quite a bit, you don't hear what the other guy is saying. Stannett goes, Jaeger drops the ball, and so Stannett has an uncontested steal. That's Rennie's 14th. And 10th in a row without getting caught. So Stannett in at second. The count on Stargill is 0-1. Stargill is 0-2. for 2. Pittsburgh 2. The Dodgers nothing in the sixth inning. Oh, you got to cut at that ball. See the dust rise up after that swing? Oh, he looks mean up there. You know, there ought to be a law against the guy swinging that hard at that little ball. <laughs> be a lot of fun to have one hit right back at you. Oh, boy. That's happened to you, huh? Oh, yeah, this very guy, I, uh book on him also is to keep the ball inside so one day I got real clever and I had two strikes on him I thought I'd go away and kind of waste the pitch and then come back inside and when I went away he hit one which it went over my right shoulder I tried to catch it but my, you know my reflexes weren't that quick and I turned around and looked to see who's going to catch it and went over the center field wall mm. popped up Garvey telling Sizemore he'll handle it and Steve not lying two down So Stanton at second, two down in the sixth inning. And Richie Zisk, the batter. All right, if you're Walter Alston now, you've got Zisk, a right-handed batter up there. First base open. Parker, left-handed batter on deck. You put Zisk on? No. I, now, he would put him on, and I wouldn't put him on. And, and the reason why, and uh, not taking anything away from Zisk, I think Parker is a better hitter than Zisk. Parker doesn't care anything about left-handed pitching. He'll hit it just as well as he will right-handed pitching. He's got a chance of getting chinkers over the infield, so I would pitch to him. And that's what they're doing as he takes up high. Ball one. Standing at second base with two down. The Pirates leading 2-0 in the bottom of the sixth inning. 
Of course, that might be another reason why I'm up here rather than managing, too. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, you'd be a great manager. You'd love it when everybody came in after the game. Oh, I would write huh? Oh, I wouldn't let them in. Jaeger tries to pick him off, but Stennett gets back. There are some guys around the country, writers who are laying for you, Giddy. Oh, yeah. I had a guy down in Houston get after me. He says, how do you justify the fact that you interview ball players when you didn't inter get inter you didn't like to be interviewed yourself? You know, I explained it simply. Uh, first of all, I don't have to answer to anybody. And secondly, I wouldn't interview the guy if he didn't want it. Popped up. Who's going to take it? Sizemore. And the Pirates are done in the sixth inning. No runs, no hits. The Dodgers make an error. Pirates leave one. We go to the seventh. Pittsburgh ahead, 2-0. John Candelaria, a no-hitter through six. The Dodgers have had men on in only one inning. In the third, he walked Yeager, and then Lopes and Sizemore got aboard on errors. He got out of the jam by getting Russell to ground out. Outside of the third, he has been perfect. He has struck out five. He has now set down 10 in a row since an error by Robinson in the third. And the Dodgers in the seventh inning to send up Garvey, Say, and Baker. 2-0 Pittsburgh. Garvey has grounded out and struck out. Same situation as we had the other night in New York. If there's a guy I wouldn't want to face, it'd be Steve Garvey here. He's got to be one of the most dangerous men in the, in the Dodger lineup as far as getting the base hit. Well, these next three guys that he's got facing right here, if he can get by this inning, then, then I would say he stands a pretty good chance of pitching a no-hitter, but this is the meat of their lineup right now. Oh, and two. This program being brought to you is an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. We'll pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Inside, one and two. Al Michaels with Bob Gibson and Norm Cash in Pittsburgh. The Pirates with two runs in the fifth, leading two nothing. Pitch, and down he goes, and six strikeouts for Candelaria. You know, one problem that a, that a pitcher might have, you can see right here, that ball is a foot outside, and he swung at it. The one problem that a pitcher might have uh, in the seventh inning, or anywhere after the seventh inning, when he knows that he's close to pitching a no-hitter, he gets a little careful. A lot of time you can get careless when you get careful. Ron Say takes a curve for a strike. Starts throwing the ball like a dart, you're saying. Hits the center. Oliver has room. Makes the catch. Edge of the track. So Say gets good wood, but hits it to the deepest part of the park. Two down. You know what's really impressive about Candelaria tonight? He is a left-hander. He is wicked against left-handed hitters. But the Dodgers right now have only one left-handed hitter in the lineup. That's Doug Rao, the pitcher. The other left-handed hitter, Bill Buckner, hurt his hip on a swing the first time he came up tonight and was replaced by Lacey, a right-handed hitter. When a guy's got good enough stuff to pitch a no-hitter, he doesn't care who's out there. He hits those spots and he throws the ball hard. Uh, he throws that curveball with real good spin. And it really doesn't matter whether there's a left-hander or a right-handed out there. He's going to try to blow him away. Pirates ahead 2-0. As Doug Rao gets set to go to work in the bottom of the sixth inning, Stennett, Oliver, and Stargell. Pirates getting two in the fifth on singles by Zisk and Parker, and a double by Robinson. Rennie Stennett is 0 for 2, flying to right, grounded to Garvey. hitting 264. Hey! On one the count. No, 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 no. Bill Russell. Throw is high and Bennett who has good speed I think would have beaten it out anyway. 
Johnny Stennett aboard. Al Oliver coming up. And for Oliver, well, there have been some changes since the All-Star game. Think changed a little bit for you? Yes, they have. I must, I must admit, I think basically what's happened, I think um, I, I ran some tough pitching, and also I, I ran into a lot of Adam balls. I've hit the ball exceptionally well uh, since the All-Star break, but for some strange reason, uh, the defensive ball players have been doing an outstanding job. So I think it's a combination of the two. It's the fact that I had have a lot of balls at people and the fact that I have ran to some good pitching. Al Oliver has blocked and singled, standing at first base. They gave Russell an error on the play, the Dodgers' first error of the night. The Pirates have hit only two homers against the Dodgers this season. Oliver has one, Robinson the other, both off Rao. One and the count on Al. He's got a great attitude to fell at the plate. Hitter. You know, I really don't care anything about the attitude. He can hit. <laughs> <laughs> Popped out. Jaeger giving chase. Won't have room. One and one. All right, you've said before, Norman, you like Oliver for the batting title. I've got to go with Pete Rose because Pete can smell it now. Bob, who do you think? Well, I got to go with Rose, and, and the reason is, uh, you know, Pete gets 200 hits almost every year. And right now, I think he's, I'm not sure, but he's somewhere like 20 hits ahead of uh, Oliver. And, and I think that that's a, a big deficit to make up. Foul back, one and two the count. You guys never do agree with me. <laughs> and I'm right all the time. <laughs> True. I've been talking to Dorothy Cat. <laughs> Maybe they'll tie. We all of us be satisfied. <laughs> Standed off to his lead at first. The one-two to Oliver. Popped up. Shallow right center. Dusty Baker after looking at Lope. Davy makes the catch for the out. Lope's playing center. Normally a second baseman, but he's played quite a bit of center. Baker, Baker has been playing a lot of center, and now he's over and right. So a bit of confusion. Yeah, they got their signals crossed up there. You, somebody's got to do the yelling out there. I got it, I got it. Another guy's just got to back off. A lot of times when you have a, a lot of people here and the noise in the crowd is quite a bit, you don't hear what the other guy is saying. Stennett goes, Jaeger drops the ball, and so Stennett has an uncontested steal. Rennie's 14th and 10th in a row without getting caught. So Stennett in at second. The count on Stargell is 0-1. Stargell is 0 for 2. Pittsburgh 2. The Dodgers nothing in the sixth inning. 0-2. Oh, he got to cut at that ball. See the dust rise up at this point? mean up there. You know there ought to be a law against the guy swinging that hard at that little ball. <laughs> be a lot of fun to have one hit right back at you. Oh boy. That's happened to you, huh? Oh yeah, this very guy. I, uh, the book on him also is to keep the ball inside. So one day I got real clever and I had two strikes on him. I thought I'd go away and kind of waste the pitch and then come back inside. And when I went away, he hit one which it went over my right shoulder. I tried to catch it, but my, you know, my reflexes weren't that quick, and I turned around and looked to see who was going to catch it and went over the center field wall. Mm. Popped up. Garvey telling Sizemore he'll handle it. And Steve not lying. Two down. So standing at second, two down in the sixth inning. And Richie Zisk, the batter. All right, if you're Walter Alston now, you got Zisk, a right-handed batter up there. First base open. Parker, left-handed batter on deck. You put Zisk on? No. Now no. he would put him on, and I wouldn't put him on. And, and the reason why, and uh, not taking anything away from Zisk, I think Parker is a better hitter than Zisk. Parker doesn't care anything about left-handed pitching. He'll hit it just as well as he will right-handed pitching. He's got a chance of getting chinkers over the infield, so I would pitch to him. And that's what they're doing as he takes up high. Ball one. Stennett at second base with two down. The Pirates leading 2 nothing in the bottom of the sixth inning. Of course, that might be another reason why I'm up here rather than managing, too. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, you 
you'd be a great manager. You'd love it when everybody came in after the game. Oh, All I would writers. Huh? Oh, I wouldn't let them in. Jaeger tries to pick him off, but Stennett gets back. There are some guys around the country, writers who are laying for you, Giddy. Oh, yeah. I had a guy down in Houston get after me. He says, how do you justify the fact that you interview ball players when you didn't inter get in you didn't like to be interviewed yourself? You know, I explained it simply. Uh, first of all, I don't have to answer to anybody. And secondly, I wouldn't interview a guy if he didn't want it. Popped up. Who's going to take it? Sizemore. And the Pirates are done in the sixth inning. No runs, no hit. The Dodgers make an error. Pirates lead one. We go to the seventh. Pittsburgh ahead 2-0. Candelaria, a no-hitter through six. The Dodgers have had men on in only one inning. In the third, he walked Jaeger, and then Lopes and Sizemore got aboard on errors. He got out of the jam by getting Russell to ground out. Outside of the third, he has been perfect. He has struck out five. He has now set down ten in a row since an error by Robinson in the third. And the Dodgers in the seventh inning to send up Garvey, Say, and Baker. 2-0 Pittsburgh. Garvey has grounded out and struck out. Well, one. Same situation as we had the other night in New York. If there's a guy I wouldn't want to face, it would be Steve Garvey here. He's got to be one of the most dangerous men in the, in the Dodger lineup as far as getting the base hit. Well, these next three guys that he's got facing right here, if he can get by this inning, then, then I would say he stands a pretty good chance of pitching a no-hitter, but this is the meat of their lineup right now. Two. This program being brought to you is an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. We'll pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Inside, one and two. Al Michaels with Bob Gibson and Norm Cash in Pittsburgh. The Pirates with two runs in the fifth, leading two nothing. Pitch, and down he goes. That's six strikeouts for Candelaria. You know, one problem that a, that a pitcher might have, you can see right here, he, that ball is a foot outside, and he swung at it. The one problem that a pitcher might have uh, in the seventh inning, or anywhere after the seventh inning, when he knows that he's close to pitching a no-hitter, he gets a little careful. A lot of time you can get careless when you get careful. Ron Say takes a curve for a strike. Throwing the ball like a dart, Hit the center. Oliver has room. Makes the catch. Edge of the track. So Say gets good wood, but heads it to the deepest part of the park. Two down. You know what's really impressive about Candelaria tonight? He is a left-hander. He is wicked against left-handed hitters. But the Dodgers right now have only one left-handed hitter in the lineup. That's Doug Rao, the pitcher. The other left-handed hitter, Bill Buckner, hurt his hip on a swing the first time he came up tonight and was replaced by Lacey, a right-handed hitter. When a guy's got good enough stuff to pitch a no-hitter, he doesn't care who's out there. He hits those spots and he throws the ball hard. Uh, he throws that curveball with real good spin. And it really doesn't matter whether there's a left-hander or a right-handed out there. He's going to try to blow him away. Well, he's definitely got good stuff, because they're swinging and missing a lot of pitches. They're not fouling the ball off. Baker hits it on one hop to Tavares, and Candelaria has gone through seven. Those of you watching the Yankees and Royals, back now to Bob Euchre. And here in Pittsburgh, the Dodgers go out one, two, three, and after six and a half, Pirates two, Dodgers nothing. Preceding was a message on behalf of Major League Baseball. Bottom of the seventh inning, John Candelaria. That's the whole story right there. Candelaria, seven no-hit innings. Watching the Bucks come up in the bottom of the seventh inning. If anybody gets on, Candelaria will come up. They've got the six, seven, and eight hitters. Parker, Robinson, and Dyer. Dave Parker, one for two. Hits Rouse first pitch down to Garvey on a couple of hops. And quickly one down. 
You're right, Bob. These pirates don't wait around for nothing, do they? They put that stick in their hand for one thing. That's to get up there and switch at it. You know, there used to be old Sam Cole saying that if you, if you bounce it up, there's the only way you could get a bomb. But they got a guy, Manny Sanguin, that will swing at the ball when it bounces, and he will hit it. <laughs> Bill Robinson, the batter, drove in the game's only runs with a double in the fifth inning. He doubled after Zisk and Parker had singled, and that's been it. One and all on Robinson. Bill hitting 317. Hit foul to right, one and one. Crowd tonight is 15,131. That's not a bad crowd on a Monday night with the Pirates being written off by a lot of fans. Dodgers losing five straight and the Steelers on local television. Well, you know, I think the, the fans, a baseball fan is a baseball fan. And he loves to see a good ball game. And anytime you have the Pirates and the Dodgers out here, you're going to have a good ball game. You know, you keep talking about football, you know, taking over the number one sport. You tell me, if you played one game of baseball a week, would you pack the stadium ever? day that day like you do football i kind of think sure you would, you would. I, I would imagine what if you played football seven days a week foul back well the great thing about baseball is that people can still you know all kinds of people can afford it prices have gone up but it's still the cheapest sports ticket around Robinson strikes out, looking, and there's two down. You know, it, it never fails when a, when a guy pitches a no-hitter, or at least when he comes close to pitching a no-hitter, you fail to mention that the guy, Rao, or whoever, pitches a pretty good ball game. It always seems that the other guy pitches a good ball game also. I don't to feel a reason for that is if uh, your team has an eight or nine nothing lead early in the game, you might have a tendency to just want to throw strikes. Right. But the game still isn't out of reach as far as Rowell's concerned, and he's bearing down every pitch. Ball two, two and on Dyer, Candelaria on deck. Charlie Huff gets up in the Dodger pen. Rao is due to hit third when the Dodgers bat in the eighth. So this would figure to be Doug's last inning. has walked only one. That was Oliver in the first inning. There's Candelaria on deck. Rao has struck out six. Three and one. Interesting note, the Dodgers have not been the victim of a no-hitter. There's Huff. The Dodgers have not been the victim of a no-hitter since 1950. Dickford of the Boston Braves did it at Boston. Dyer to fly ball to left field. Lee Lacey underneath it. And the Pirates are gone quickly here in the seventh. So we go to the eighth inning. Candelaria to face the bottom of the Dodger order with a score. Pittsburgh two, Los Angeles nothing. Monday Night Baseball next week. It'll start one hour earlier, 7.30 Eastern Time, 6.30 Central, over most of these ABC stations. Don't know where we'll be yet, but we'll have a good one for you. So check your local listings. Next Monday night, one hour earlier. And those of you watching the Yankees and the Royals, welcome back again to Pittsburgh. Where John Candelaria warming up to go to work on the bottom of the Dodger order. In the eighth inning, he'll be facing Lee Lacey. Lacey came on when Bill Buckner injured his hip trying to check a swing in the third inning. It'll be Lacey, Yeager, and then Doug Rao, the pitcher, do up. So we'll see a pinch hitter with Charlie Huff throwing in the Dodger bullpen. Two runs, five hits, and two errors for the Pirates. No runs, no hits, and one error for the Dodgers in the eighth inning. Michaels with Bob Gibson and Norm Cash in Pittsburgh. Lacey came up with a count 0-2 in the third. Saw one pitch, it was strike three. Then grounded out in the fifth inning. Pop foul, not
Not too much room in foul ground here, and Stargell will lean in but won't have a play. I'll tell you one thing. He's had, Cantillaris has had complete control of this ball game. There hasn't even been a, a real questionable ball hit off of him yet. They've all been routine ground balls. When you look back, the closest the Dodgers have come to a hit, Lopes, the first man up in the game, drove one to center, and Oliver made a running catch. Up and in, one and one. He's moving the ball around real good. I think right here, you're going to see him go to the spots that uh, they talk about before the game starts. Lee Lacey is a guy that uh, he likes the ball out over the plate. You can jam him. You can get inside. And I think that uh, he, he's aware. He looks very cool out there. I'm sure inside he's jumping up and down. Foul back, two and two. Yeah, you, you can bet he knows what's going on out there. He knows he's got one going. He's known it since the first inning. <laughs> Breaking ball, comebacker. Knocks it down, picks it up. Lobs to Stargell for the out. down in the eighth inning. Steve Yeager, the Dodger catcher, has drawn a walk. It's the only walk Candelaria has given up. And is blind to right. Yep. Again, if you join this late, Candelaria in trouble in the third inning. The Pirates made two errors back of him. He walked a man, so the Dodgers had the bases loaded, but he got Russell to ground out. One out in the eighth. Check swing foul. Rick Auerbach comes out on deck to hit for Doug Rao. I think it's the last thing he wants to have that ball hit back at him after on the mound. <laughs> he don't want no part of that thing. One and one to count. And it's funny, you know, Bob, a little ball like that could have hit him on the arm or could have bounced off his leg and could have been called a base hit. Right. Anytime that ball gets back to that pitcher, regardless of how it's hit, there's a chance of him getting a base hit. Two and one. You know, you talk about the pressure on the pitcher. There's a little pressure on the official score now, too, on a close play. Well, uh, you know, usually on, in a situation like this, if there's any doubt in his mind at all, he's, he's going to put it down in favor of the pitcher. Hit to Robinson on two hops. Takes his time. Gets him. And Candelaria is four outs away. You can talk about pressure on the official scorekeeper, but it's starting to get to me a little bit, too. <laughs> I love it. Most exciting moment in baseball. Guy's got a no-hitter late in the game. He'll go to work now on Rick Auerbach, utility infielder. He's been up only 40 times this season with four hits. You love to face a pinch hitter in this situation. He's stiff. He hasn't been swinging all day. One and all. See, I've been in a no-hitter, Bob. Have you been in one? <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> I think I've been there. We won a no-hitter one time. In there on the count, one and one. Bob Gibson, the last man to pitch a no-hitter against the Pirates. The last Pirate pitcher to throw a no-hitter, Doc Ellis did it in 1970 at San Diego. Foul. All right, now you don't throw that pitch again. <laughs> that slow curveball down and in. First of all, that's not a good place to pitch anybody, uh, especially if you're talking about a left-handed pitcher pitching to a right-handed hitter or vice versa. Down and in is a no-no territory. So you got to stay away from that. One and two on our back. Two and two. Of course, wants everything called a strike. Nick Pelosi, the plate on fire. Bill Robinson, deep, close to the line at third. Uh, he should be off the line here a little bit. Man, that profile, he can be behind 15 to nothing. His guy can have a no-hitter. I guess he's seen it all. 
Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it looks like you might have to put something there to wake him up. I don't know. This is Charlie Huff in the pitch for the Dodgers. Rao goes seven, gives up two runs and five hits. And Charlie Huff, who's had a super year working out of the bullpen, he's the key man for L.A. now. Mike Marshall dealt to Atlanta. And Huff has responded with a record of nine and four, nine saves, and a 2.48 ERA. He throws what we call the wobble ball. Knuckle ball, no spin. Tough to hit. He's done a good job for him. Standing ovation for Candelaria. Again, welcome back to the Yankees and Royals viewers. Candelaria has just gotten a standing ovation. Charlie Huff throws him a knuckleball for a strike. As a hitter tonight, hole for two. Hits the left field. Lacey coming on and makes the pass. Probably just as well. I'm sure he'd rather be back on the bench resting right now instead of running the bases. Well, I don't know if I'd want to be on a, on a bench resting because when you're sitting on the bench, you have more time to think about what you're about to do or what you're almost near doing. Uh, I think I'd rather be on the base running or at least thinking about something else. Brings up Tavares. When Candelaria goes to the top of the ninth inning, he has the one, two, and three hitters, Lopes, Sizemore, and Russell. <laughs> Tavares, who is one for three, takes a strike. The scoring in the game can be recapped very quickly. In the fifth inning, Zisk and Parker with singles. Robinson doubled him home. On to the count. Charlie Huff in relief of Doug Rao, who went seven. It's been a well-played ball game, I'll tell you, on both sides. Knuckleball high on the count, one and two. Stennett will be next. Toward the hole, Russell covering some ground. Gets it. Two down. I can't hardly wait for the side to be out. I don't know about you. Supposed to be impartial, however. Oh. <laughs> it's difficult. Uh, it's tough to be impartial when a guy's about to pitch a no hitter out there. Here is Stenick. Running is over three. on the count. Fast game. Right now the game at the one hour and 40 minute mark. One out, two down. Base is empty in the bottom of the eighth inning. One and one. Now yeah, we've seen pitchers with both of them got great control. You've seen a lot of first ball hitting. Both clubs swing at the first good pitch they see. Jaeger with the oversized mitt. Jamson gets a comebacker, and it's an easy inning. So all the drama building. Those of you with the Yankees and Royals, we go back now to Bob Euchre. And here in Pittsburgh, we will go to the ninth inning with the Pirates leading the Dodgers 2-0. Back with more after this word from our local station. The whole story right here. John Candelaria, six feet seven, 215 pounds. Great basketball career in high school in New York. Had a chance to go to college. Probably would have wound up in the NBA or the ABA. Chose baseball. Called up by the Pirates last year. Came into national prominence in the playoffs. Struck out 14 Reds in game number three, but the Reds won it. And now tonight, goes into the ninth inning against the Dodgers with a no-hitter. Pittsburgh. Al Michaels, Bob Gibson, Norm Cash with Dave Lopes to lead off in the ninth. 0 for 3. Hit to short. Easy play for Frank Tavares. One down. Do you know what's going through his mind right now? Two more outs. Don't mess up. I'm getting excited myself. Yeah, but does it, he didn't want to mess up right now. He wants that guy to hit the ball, but he didn't want him to hit it too hard. 
You think he's not thinking about it? Yeah, he's thinking about it. Ted Sizemore, the batter. Sizemore 0 for 3. One out, base is empty. Takes a strike. The Dodgers have not had a no-hitter pitched against them in 26 years. Burn Bickford of the Boston Braves, August 11th, 1950. toward the line. Parker says he has it in foul ground and he does. He does. Bill Russell will come up. Russell 0 for 3. Came into the game hitting 300. You know what Ken and Larry would like to do right now? He'd like to call timeout and go into the clubhouse and throw up. I mean, he's just that <laughs> nervous. Two down in the ninth inning. A strike on a breaking pitch. 0 and 1. He's walked one, struck out seven. Dodgers haven't had a base runner since the third. 1 and 1. Best ball away. Hey, he's not nibbling, Bob Gibson. No, sir. He's standing ahead of me, coming right down there with that ball. He's going to throw that ball hard and as hard as he can. Got to come with your best stuff right now. Oh, yeah. You don't mess around with throwing chains up off speed stuff or trying to nibble the corners. There it is. Popped up. Can they get it? <laughs> Tavares going out and coming in is over. <laughs> to make the John Candelaria pitches a no hitter. Where do people go wild? You think they just won the World Series or something? feeling there's no other feeling in the world like that for a pitcher none the most electric moment in baseball john candelaria a no hitter al oliver had a long way to go it looked like Tavares might make the catch but oliver comes on and makes the catch on the dead run and candelaria he had eight perfect innings tonight the only time the dodgers had a man on they loaded the bases a walk and two errors in the third inning and john candelaria pitches a no hitter the Dodgers have been no-hitted for the first time in 26 years. Pittsburgh wins it by a score of 2-0.